There's no plan to solve the migrant crisis, but at least you have a robot in New York City. Hey YouTube peeps, welcome back to my channel, D Rock YT. I um, just wanted to touch up on a little bit of what I talked about last time, which was end time events and the rise of AI, specifically looking at how AI correlates with the Terminator. I'll be back. And, uh, and the Matrix. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI. I mean artificial intelligence and the bible and and uh well you can you can see it where is that over here if you see the little thing pop up up here you can click on that and it'll bring you to that video um you'll also be able to to catch it at the end of this as well um to be able to select it so um i'm i'm doing an update on this because today um or this actually since that video in the last week or two there's been a bunch of stuff that's come out several stories actually which are a little interesting uh and the one that kind of hit my attention and got me to jump in and start doing this video was this story here on uh twitter by uh colin rug yeah, i hope you can see that there but basically he stated that uh new york city mayor eric adams has unveiled the king scope or night scope k5 security robot to patrol the subway station in Times Square. There's no plan to solve the migrant crisis, but at least you have a robot in New York City. The 400 pound robot was leased by the New York Police Department for six months and will cost them $12,500. We're committed to exploring innovative tools to continue to make this city the safest big city in America. And this robot, K5, it has the potential to serve as an important tool in our toolbox, Adam said. In 2017, the city tried out a similar robot. However, it decided to take a swim in the fountain and drowned itself. So this one they've made heavy, 400 pounds. It's going to be harder to move. Um, but what's interesting, and I think I, I did comment. Yeah, I said, this is literally RoboCop. <laughs> it begins. Um, so what what's, what's interesting is just this thought that they're bringing robots into the city now to help with police <laughs> and now this robot isn't armed or anything in fact we'll watch a little story on that uh in a second um but this follows on the tail of another story which was a missing f-35 jet that disappeared so the story goes that there was some sort of a technological issue with the plane. The pilot ejected and there was another F-35 with him. That F-35 landed. The pilot that ejected ended up in somebody's backyard um, and the plane was just missing. It was flying somewhere on its own. There was no nearby crash. So there were... Um, there was like a no-fly zone put up and there was a call-out. Uh, across uh, mainstream media and socials for people to be on the lookout for this plane. <laughs> and um, this is an F-35 fighter jet. The interesting thing is that nobody knows how it went missing. It's a stealth bomber, so it's hard to detect. But it also had lost its tracking um, sense or the transmitter was not working. So there's, there's no way to track <laughs> where this jet had gone. So there was a lot of speculation on what on earth is going on. Was it actually hijacked and they just don't want to tell us is it, has it gone rogue? Cause there is AI technologies in these, uh, jets. What I didn't realize, uh, until I just started this story was that there's actually a voice recording, uh, to 911 from the pilot. So, um, Let's just listen to that for a sec. A military jet crash. I'm the pilot. We need to get uh, rescue rolling. I'm not sure where the airplane is. It would have crash landed somewhere. I ejected. How far did he fall? I was at 2,000 feet. 
Okay. <laughs> you tell the 911 person's like, uh, Okay, and what caused the fall? Uh, an aircraft failure. Okay. This isn't in my training manual. Okay, is there any serious bleeding? I, I don't know. I can't see myself. No, you look fine. Okay. You just pull the uh, What did the other person see. say? I feel okay. My back just hurts. <laughs> so, um, so the story goes on to say emergency uh, details from a four-minute phone call made by a military pilot to an emergency dispatcher shows he was pleading for medical help after he ejected from an F-35 fighter in a, into a South Carolina resident's backyard. The resident of the home in North Charleston first tells the dispatcher, we got a pilot in the house, and I guess he landed in my backyard, and we're trying to see if we could get an ambulance to the house, please. So thank goodness the pilot was okay. I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, the pilot then gets on the call and says, ma'am, mil a military jet crashed. I'm the pilot. We need to get rescue rolling. I'm not sure where the airplane is. It would have crash landed somewhere. I ejected. High tech jet missing somewhere over South Carolina. The pilot's account comes the same day that a federal accountability office released a 96 page report urging the department of defense and the military services to reassess the future sustaining strategy of the aircraft model as it plans to spend 1.7 trillion on 2500 f-35 lightning two stealth fighter jets so this just kind of highlights a an issue okay so <clears throat> the whole story with the rise of ai and the end times was that you know, in the Terminator movie, the AI becomes self-aware and it decides that it's better than humans and it's going to take over. And it's employed in a military, you know, it, it's controlling the military's weaponry. So it becomes self-aware, decides it wants to end humans and takes over the military weaponry. And that just brings up some some things here so how how much is ai involved in our military right now in the u.s military what's happening and uh there's there's a bit of a story here this is in the new york times um and it talks about ai brings a robot wingman to aerial combat so this is a drone controlled by artificial intelligence and let's just read a little bit of this it says it is powered into flight by a rocket engine. It can fly a distance equal to the width of China. It has a stealthy design and is... Oh, can you guys see that? I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Hang on. Let's see if this can get... It's a little better, eh? Yeah. Um, it has a stealthy design and is capable of carrying missiles it, that can hit enemy targets far beyond its visual range. But what really distinguishes the Air Force pilotless... Ec Q58A Valkyrie experimental aircraft is that it is run by artificial intelligence, putting it at the forefront of efforts by U.S. military to harness the cap capacities of an emerging technology whose vast potential benefits are tempered by deep concerns about how much autonomy to grant to a lethal weapon. <laughs> Essentially, a next generation drone, the Valkyrie, is a prototype for what the Air Force hopes can become a potent uh, supplement to its fleet of traditional fighter jets. Given human pilots a swarm of highly capable robot wingmen to deploy in battle, its mission is to marry artificial intelligence and its sensors to identify and evaluate enemy threats, and then, after getting human sign-off, to move in for the kill. Okay, so that's important. Must have human sign-off. <laughs> okay. Um, on a recent day at Elgin Air Force Base on Florida's Golf Course, Major Ross General Ross Elder, 34, a test pilot from West Virginia, was preparing for an exercise in which he would fly his F-15 fighter alongside the Valkyrie. It's a very strange feeling, Major Elder said. As other members of the Air Force team prepared to test the engine on the Valkyrie, I'm flying off the wing of something that's making its own decisions, and it's not a human brain. I could see how he could be a little concerned with that. So this is happening. Okay. So we have AI coming into 
our military. And this is a story in the New York Times. When was this from? This was from a while ago, actually. Well, it's August. August 2023, it was updated. Um, so this is what the military is willing to tell us about. Okay, so everybody says that, I, I don't know what it is now. It used to be that the military was at least 10 years ahead of anything that's publicly released. Um, I don't know if that's true anymore just because of the speed of change uh, with technology that's happening. But still, uh, you can bet they have more than this going on um, with their military and using AI. There's a good picture of it there. So it, it, it adds this little bit of a fear, um, a concern maybe, that we need to understand what's going on. Now, this is coming on the heels of what I mentioned in the End Times video, uh, The Rise of AI, which is that there has been a ton of warning about AI from um, key brains behind AI. So I've got uh, another article here, and this is um, this is from USA Today, and it was a release uh, done, I guess, in May from um, tech leaders warning in an open letter that AI poses a risk of extinction to humans. And they're not saying that it, it's going to happen. They're just saying that there needs to be some very good controls on AI technology. So uh, hundreds of scientists, tech industry execs, public figures. I'm going to zoom that in a little bit more too. Oops, that might be too much. Yeah. Uh, including leaders of Google, Microsoft, and ChatGPT are sounding the alarm about artificial intelligence, writing in a new public statement that fast evolving AI technology could create uh, as high a risk of killing off human can as nuclear war and COVID-19 like pandemics. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks, such as pandemics and nuclear war said the one sentence statements, which was released by the center for AI safety. Uh, just, just to go back for a second, um, on the F 35, there's been, of course, a bunch of stuff on popping up on Twitter X, I should say, um, the Babylon B came out with this, of course, I love the Babylon B it's awesome. Um, Exclusive Babylon B uncovers why the F-35 is so hard to find. Uh, but then this guy who heard the crash, because the, they found the debris field, they found the plane, um, it did crash two hours north of where it should have been. So it flew for two hours and then crashed um, at whatever speed it was going, I'm not sure. But um, this guy, just this Randolph White, he just has a great testimony to share on this so let's uh actually i'm going to i'll expand it and let's go back to the beginning and let's just listen in normally it's pretty quiet but on sunday afternoon i was in the uh in the bathroom taking a shave and i heard a, a screeching saw that between a screech and a whistle i said what in the world is this and i heard a boom in my whole house, show. Sure. White says he didn't realize it was a plane at the time, so he didn't call anybody. The first thought came to me. I said, well, that must be what's in a meteorite coming out of space or something. And I said, well, if the airplane, it needed to be reported. But the thing was flying is too low. Normally, it's pretty quiet, but on... I just love the the noise of effects that he gives it. Um, so yes, it did crash. They did find it. So we don't have to worry anymore. At least that's what they're telling us, right? So this article, um, this is this one, USA Today. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other social societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war, said the one sentence statement, which is released by the Center for AI Safety, the CAIS, a San Francisco based nonprofit organization. Um, I think there was something else in here. Among the 350 signatories of the public statement were executives from the top four AI firms, OpenAI, Google, DeepMind, Microsoft, and Anthropic. One of them is a renowned researcher, the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, 
who quit his job as vice president of Google last month so he could speak freely of the dangers of technology he helped develop. So this is this is uh, serious. Also signing the statement was Sam Altman, the chief executive of OpenAI, the firm behind the popular conversation bot ChatGPT, which has made AI accessible to millions of users and allowed them to pose questions to it. Demis Hassabi, I don't know if I'm saying that correct, who heads Google's AI division, also signed the statement. Altman, Hinton, and other industry leaders have become increasingly vocal about their concerns about AI and the need for some kind of technology guardrails for it, including government regulation. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong, Altman said in a recent Senate Judiciary Subcommittee hearing about potential oversight of AI. And we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. So this is this is going on right now. Now, this is the United States where AI has been largely developed and brought forth, but other countries are also working on it. And are they putting in AI um, regulations and, and trying to control it? This is what we don't know. And this is where it becomes serious because, um, you know, these science fiction movies, The Matrix as well, predicts this future where AI is hailed as a an awesome technology and then as it develops it it becomes self-aware and it starts to have a disdain for humans um, and take over so that being said this robot police officer that showed up on New York PD um, the New York Police Department um, just adds a little bit to that. It's like, okay, they're, they're bringing this technology into the streets and it's not armed with weapons like RoboCop. You are illegally parked on private property. You have 20 seconds to move your vehicle. But it is the start of not only tracking everybody, um, and we'll listen to the story on that, but um, using AI-informed robots to control people and you know protect against possible harms. So there's there's a news story we can listen a little bit on on what this one actually is. This this new RoboCop in uh, New York because they're they're implementing it in the um, in the subway stations. It's not it's not like it's a threat or anything. Um, they're just trying to find a way to deal with the crime that's been going on. So let's uh, let's listen in on this. I'll expand that. Hopefully we can see. In advance in crime fighting, you may soon see a new robotic crime fighter in the subway system. Yeah, no gun. No baton and no handcuffs. But take a look. This bot is equipped with cameras to send live video and other intelligence back to the police department. With the latest, here's Eyewitness News reporter NJ Burkett. The newest member of the NYPD weighs 400 pounds. That sounded like R2D2. There's an hour and works midnights without a single complaint. Transit commanders couldn't be happier. Welcome to New York City, K5. And welcome to the NYPD. K5 is a robot that will patrol the Times Square subway station in the overnight hours. Equipped with multiple cameras and two-way communication. Intended to deter crime and to capture crimes in progress. Equipped with a panic button. We are taking an expansive camera network in the subway system and adding a series of cameras that not only moves, but a device that can connect subway riders to immediate assistance if the need arises. Crime underground is trending lower, but violent assaults are still more than 50% higher than they were four years ago. K5 is being lead. I'm just going to stop that for a second and go back because um, there's one guy there. Um, and adding a series. <laughs> this guy in the back, he's like, what, what are we doing here? 
<laughs> it's kind of got that look on his face. Of cameras that not only moves, but a device that can connect subway riders to immediate assistance <laughs> if the need arises. He's just staring. I, I can't believe we're doing this. I'm, I'm sure he's fully aware of what's happening, but it just looks like that. Crime underground is trending lower, but violent assaults are still more than 50% higher than they were four years ago. K5 is being leased from Nightscope, its manufacturer. It has facial recognition capabilities and listening devices, but Mayor Adams insists neither will be activated. It is our duty to utilize state-of-the-art technology advancements to help keep New Yorkers safe. I believe we must do it wisely and not intrusively. Civil liberties experts say there needs to be better oversight, quote, to ensure our personal data isn't exploited and that no communities are harassed, targeted, or abused. But the NYPD is ramping up its use of robotics, from dogs to drones to tracking devices, and now wow. robots. I'd rather have the presence of a police department than having a machine. I think it's a great idea. K-5 will be accompanied by a patrol officer for the first two months of a pilot program, mainly to answer questions from curious riders. A solo deployment expected just in time for the holiday tourist season. The mayor insists that pranksters who may try to vandalize K-5 will be identified and arrested. How it holds up against Jawas with lasers is another question. You know that that's going to happen. There's going to be somebody with some sort of weapon, you know, some sort of EMP type weapon that takes it down. I mean, oh my goodness. Let me see if I can find uh, the footage of, oh, I, I bet you I can. Hang on one sec. The, the other robots that are in the city. <laughs> yes, here we go. Here we go. These are delivery robots and what's happening to them in cities right now. So this is why um, this one is 400 pounds. Here, I'm going to skip forward. There's this one with this lady. <laughs> is this it? Yeah. No, 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 that's not it. I think that's the same lady, but um, where is it? Here. <laughs> She's just riding it, having a great time. So, you know, you know, people are going to mess with it as soon as there's not a police officer um, with the the vehicle anymore, the robot anymore. So what does this have to do with the end times and and God and, and the return of Jesus and and uh, getting prepared? Well, I, I, I kind of wanted to focus a little bit on scripture um, and just tie this up with with things because really we don't know when how we just know that the bible says there's going to be some things that are insane like in revelations 13 that it, it talks about this image made to look like the beast that's given um the ability to speak and convince people so um it has this ability to mimic uh the the antichrist or whoever that beast is in Revelation 13. And ha though it's not real, it appears real and has the authority to do crazy things. So it's interesting how AI ties into that. I've been playing around with AI um, with uh, some of the, the deep fake stuff that you can do. Um, and I'll post a video on one test that I've been doing with... Um, Tim Cast, Tim Pool. I did a deep fake of him. Uh, I spent I spent about an hour, probably spent a couple hours, I guess, with trying to get it all sorted out. But it took about an hour just to get the basics of it. All I did was record myself saying something, used an AI tool to recreate his speech, his vo vocal patterns. So it it had his voice. All I did was read the script of that with my own mouth and my own face and a green screen behind me. And then I used a deep fake program to overlay his face and attach it to my lip movements. And it appears that he is saying what I made him say. Basically I wrote the script. He said it in his voice 
It's his face. And that, you know, is very basic use of the technology. What I did in an hour, if somebody spent more time, had some of the better tools that are out there, I had just some free tools. They can do it. They can make anybody say anything on TV, on anything. And and I'm sure this is going to happen in this U.S. election coming up. Uh, and, and other countries as well, where there will be some deep fake of one of the the you know presidential candidates saying something atrociously wrong, and it'll look exactly like them. It'll sound like them. And how do they deny it? Do they say that's not me? That's AI. <laughs> do people believe it? You know, the, it, it's getting dangerous already. So this is a. Uh, First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1, it says, But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and teaching of demons. Teachings of demons. Okay. So it's, it's hearkening back to the fact that we are in a spiritual war, not just a battle between each other. In fact, it's not really flesh and blood battles. It's, 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 it's against principalities and darkness. Um, angels of darkness that are trying to deceive mankind away from God, push them away from who their true reality is and lead them down a path of um, anything but God, basically. First uh, Timothy 4, towards the end of that same chapter, 11, says, prescribe and teach these things. So this is Paul talking to Timothy. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. Until I come, and until I come, give your attention to the public reading and exhortation and, and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gifts within you, or gift within you, which is, which was granted to you through the words of prophecy and the laying on of hands by the council of elders. It's calling. Timothy to live a simple, solid life of faith. And that's what we need to do too. And in case any of you are, are feeling that you're not, you're not ready for God. You could never make it. He won't accept you. You don't belong. Uh, you don't fall in line with his, his requirements for holiness, you you don't want God because maybe he's going to speak to you and tell you to do something. Uh, I want to encourage you today to open your heart and to ask, God, if you're there, I want to know you. And just start to ask that question. Because when God comes in, when he comes into your life, he is love and it changes everything. It, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter who you are, who you've been in the past. God is love and he has grace and forgiveness for every single person on this earth. And I have a video that I want to share from a guy that I saw this week. Um, it was, it was on TikTok, but somebody had shared it on, on reels and, um, and I, I, I went to TikTok to try and find his username and his channel's gone. There's lots of people sharing his videos. Um, so his hashtag has 10.2 million views, but his whole channel's gone. And this is him here. Um, but let me switch to that video. Um, can you see that? No. There we go. Uh, let's make it a little bigger. Go right to the beginning of it. So just listen to this. If you're questioning God, if you if you don't know if he could accept you, if you've been through too much, just listen to um, this guy's story. His name is Dylan. This is not his. This is somebody else that shared his TikTok. So it's, it's shared from their account. So this is not Dylan's account. Dylan, Dylan Loving. I'm going to try and upload it to YouTube and, and try and get it to Dylan. Cause I found Dylan's channel 
and he, I don't know if he's lost the video because his, his TikTok is shut down, but it's not on his channel. There's a couple other of his videos, but not this one. And this one is so powerful. So listen to this. And you see right here in this picture is my dad. He died six months ago from a heroin overdose. This right here is my brother, Michael. He died when he was 17 after a night of party and came home, laid in his bed, died from a brain aneurysm. This right here is my sister's secret. A month after my little brother died, she gets out of the city jail. She took a shot of fentanyl and cocaine and she overdosed and died. They found her laying dead in the woods. This crazy looking guy right here was me six years ago. Those same demons that killed my brother, my sister, and my dad tried to take me out too. But six years ago, I was sitting in a jail cell and somebody put a Bible in my hand. <laughs> and I started reading that thing. I asked the Holy Spirit to come in and fill me up and he's been changing me ever since. I'm happily married to this beautiful woman of God right here. She gave me this little cutie. This is our newborn son right here. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Wow. <laughs> what do you say to that? I mean, Jesus can take anyone through the worst situations and better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. You meet God, it changes everything. You open up and let him in and realize, holy smokes, I have been ignoring God all my life, but he is the reason I'm here and he made me for him. And, and so when you open that door, it changes everything. So I just want to encourage you. If I can do anything with this channel, it's to encourage people to come to the grace of God, which he gives freely to everyone. If you believe and receive his son, confess with your mouth, believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. Thanks guys. Tune in again. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, share this video. I need to get this channel up over a thousand subscribers so I can monetize it. And I'm hoping you can help me out with that. I really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day, week, night, whatever it is. <laughs> Blessings.